Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions, such as, what is the best entry-level annual calendar? Complication that's not particularly entry-level, but you might be surprised that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get it. And where do I think you can get the best enamel dials for the money? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. I'm wearing my solid gold Gerard Perigo Laureato Evo flyback chrono calendar. One of the newest watches in my collection, kind of like my Miami douchey watch, but I really do enjoy it. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We got a bunch of very cool watches in stock. We just got in a very rare, pretty sure the only one in the world at the moment, H. Moser Venturer Big Date with the Roman Dial. This is one killer dress watch by Moser, which you guys know I love Moser, one of the highest end watch brands in the world for not a very high end price. We got in the best condition I've ever seen, vintage Zenith column wheel chrono, solid gold chronograph from the 50s um, with a column wheel movement, extremely clean. It looks like it was never polished or if it was very sparsely so, and the dial is basically mint, almost a time capsule piece. And one of the best travel watches of all time, a JLC Master Geographic World Time. Another killer piece by the watchmaker's watchmaker. All that and more at delraywatch.com. Link in the description, oh, excuse me, description below. Now guys, these are the questions you ask me on my Instagram account. That's at Federico Talks Watches. Couple times a month on my Instagram, you'll see a Q&A picture pop up. Feel free to ask your questions there. Please do not DM me as I rarely check them. Now, without any further ado and in no particular order, let's answer some. Ohio Viking Fan 123. Hey Fed, love your vids. Thank you. Other than combat straps, any other excellent aftermarket options you like? Well, Ohio Viking fan, I pretty much exclusively buy my straps from Combat Straps. But another fantastic custom strap maker, but it's based in Europe and is a little bit more expensive, is ABP Straps. A-B-P. Fantastic, high-end strap manufacturer. I've never purchased anything, but I have seen them in the wild, and um, I absolutely love them. If you are a Panerai strap guy, check out Gunny Straps for some very rustic, uh, rough and tumble straps. But personally, I'm gonna stick with combat straps. My man Aaron knows I won't cheat on him. Bo Deasy said, hey Fed, what do you think is the most toxic part of watch culture today? Uh, well, watch culture has become a little toxic and I'm not gonna deny that even I've been kind of part of this toxic culture uh, as much as I dislike it, though a lot less than than some. Uh, in my opinion, the two things that are the most toxic in the watch culture is first, social media, the whole showing off and like flexing culture, uh, you know, eating sushi in my McLaren while I show off a watch that's in my inventory, it's actually on consignment, and I probably won't pay the guy once I sell it, you know, that whole thing. Um, and, you know, general peacocking and showing off. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, also, I think, uh, on a more general note, is intolerance. Uh, watches are beautiful things. There's many different options and opinions, and I think we need to respect one another a little bit more uh, before using strong words. Now, everybody knows I'm not a Rolex fan, and you might be, uh, and, you know, I'm allowed to have my opinion, but you're allowed to have yours. And I think a lot of these arguments on social media, Facebook, Instagram, they degrade very quickly into foul language and name calling. Uh, and one of the beautiful things about watches is there's a ton of options. And even though you're wearing a watch I may very heavily dislike, the fact that you're wearing a watch in the first place makes us brothers because we both both love these little outdated trinkets that you know realistically don't really serve a purpose anymore uh, and that should be good enough for most so I, I do think like the flexing culture and just some intolerance in general t-man making moves 
Hey, Fed, what's up? What's the best martini you have ever had and where? Well, I'm shocked to say it's actually been in Miami of all places. The best dirty gin martini I've ever had was at, or is at, Jaguar's Sun, or Sonny's Steakhouse, which is owned by Jaguar's Sun. You will find me hanging out there probably a couple days a week. Uh, fantastic bar slash steakhouse, uh, kind of hipster vibes. They have a great outdoors, but more importantly, they have a martini that is, in my opinion, second to none. I mean, it is disgustingly good. Um, and if anybody from Jaguar Sun is watching, the owner will, or any of the wonderful uh, ladies that, you know, I see every time I go out there, not, not like ladies I'm hitting on, ladies that take care of me and always welcome me with open arms to serve me the martini. God, that sounded awful. Um, you guys are awesome. I love you guys, and I'll see you on Friday. Uh, Jeff H754. What are some entry-level annual calendar watches? Something that displays day, month, and date. Thanks. Uh, you know, I think the craziest value that I've seen in this is Mont Blanc. You can easily pick up a steel annual calendar for four or $5,000, even less if you get lucky. Fantastic pieces. Um, you have brands like MIH, but they're very, very niche, very hard to find, and I don't think they're particularly traditional annual calendars, but I'd say Mont Blanc is probably the winner in this arena. Doing Time Scotland. Opinions on Anne Ardain? They are local to me, so considering one for my collection. So I'm going to, you know, tell you that I don't know a lot about Anne Ardain, only what I've seen online and I've read about. Um, what I think is, you know, their cases seem to be okay and, and their movements are nothing special, but their dials are spectacular. I mean, enamel dials for very, very reasonable money. And I think they know that. I don't think anybody's buying their watch for a killer movement. They're buying their watch for a killer dial. I'd love to own an, an Anne Ardain. I'd love to pay full price because I think it's very reasonable. Um, but they have long waiting lists, they, you know, two to three years. Um, and you know what? They, they really deserve it because they've taken a niche, something that's reserved only for extremely expensive watches, enamel dials, and they're making them themselves in Scotland and putting them into watches that are, you know, under $10,000, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. And I think that is killer because the dial is such an important part of the watch and can make you fall in love with the watch. Um, and Anne Ardain are doing it extremely well. As I said, I've never held one. I've never even spoken to the brand, just from what I've read. And I can tell you, I really, really like it. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give this video a, video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so we don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. If you want to run into me, Jaguar Sun Friday nights. See you guys there. Bye-bye.